chat, uh, but are very useful. Okay, sweet. So the thing that I like use most, huh? Did you oh, say sorry. something? No, I didn't. There, there might be a little background noise here. Ah, okay. Uh, this is super important and useful. It's just a bunch of documentation for MacLeod. You can search it. Great. Yeah, okay. Oh, it's direct delta func, not direct delta functor. I see. Yes, yeah. Uh, okay. I think I can... Oh, shoot. I have to verify my Twitch account because apparently I haven't logged in on this computer before, and then I will mirror your stream or whatever Sweet. it's called. At least one viewer. Welcome. More yeah, I think that home. might be me. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> How to mirror stream Twitch? Maybe I need to be like a partner or something. Hmm. Oh, sweet. Oh, it's going to be removed on, August, on October 3rd. Oh, wow. That's weird. Made it just in time. Yeah, it's just not a thing after that. That's weird. That is weird. Well, uh, I should be able to do it, I guess, but I don't know. Okay. Channel... How do I have 17 followers? Like, no one ever watches my streams. Okay, whatever. I'm just going to tweet a link to your thing and not worry about hosting on Twitch. Cool. I just wanted to send uh, the notification to anyone who might follow me. Adeline, apparently the, the ability to mirror a stream uh, is going to be removed. Yeah, that is so weird. Super weird. But yeah, welcome, everyone. I don't know how many people are here. I don't know really how to use Twitch very much at all. But thanks for showing up. Um, going to be doing a lot of learning. It's pretty five years. Uh, also, could you share the lean thing in our Discord call as well, so that there's no stream delay? Oh yeah, let me figure out how to do that. Uh, sure. Duh. Okay, is that showing up for you? There's also some background noise. Yeah, I'm, uh, I'll see if I but can let's... ask my roommate to use headphones. Also, since we're streaming, you should probably increase your font size bigger than you usually do. Mm, thanks, good call. to see uh, and i will try and monitor the chat thanks well this is really and slowing down my poor excuse for a cpu um <laughs> but we're gonna make it lean's a bit of a monster yeah yeah, yeah. definitely the, the streaming uh two different video streams mm. but might have been better to do it on my laptop that's like a gaming laptop I don't know. We'll see in the future. Yeah, yeah, we'll see. We'll see what we can do. Um, All right. This should work at least for now. Um, so, welcome everyone. If you have any questions at any point, I will be monitoring the chat. Uh, today, we are going to start formalizing a proof that the universal cover of the circle is R. 
and that this implies that the fundamental group of the circle is the integers. We're going to do this with covering space theory. That's the plan. Yeah. So I thought uh, last night I, I thought I'd think about the math pieces that go into this. And I guess there's like a lot mm -hmm. of different ways we could try to build up the, the theory. There's like different amounts of stuff we could try to build in. Um, the most direct way I might be able to share this. Um, okay, this is visible on the Twitch stream, but maybe not in Discord. Uh, probably not in Discord. Hmm, sorry, let me figure this out. You need coverage of the proof that it's covered. That sounds good. Um, can you see the Twitch stream with a with a little delay there? With the little what? Can you can you see the Twitch stream to see my my iPad screen that I'm sharing there? Yeah, I can see it on there. Okay, cool. All right, so at least that's that's it's... Uh, doable. So, okay, covering spaces have been defined for us. That's very convenient. Um, and then it feels to me like the most important key property we need to show is that is that covering spaces have the unique homotopy lifting property. That's just going to like drive all of the all the machinery. Um, and then there's. And, I mean, then, mm -hmm. yeah, go ahead. Sorry. Depending on how general we want to make this, we could try and show so like one one version of the uh, um, homotopy or whatever is the one that connects with the flat pressure region, mm. right? right? Yes. And I'm not saying we have to do that. The home to be lifting property is kind of just saying, you know, this, this is a right? Yes, yeah. And the uniqueness is that the, the fibers are discrete. Yeah. So we, 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 one way we could do this is we could prove the home to be lifting property uh, to, to do the vibration and then, you know, use the long sequence of the vibration to get the non Mm-hmm. Yeah. Hi, Sarah. Hello. Yeah, we can. Uh, so yeah. we can do it that way. I yeah. It's certainly an option. Mm. So yeah, yeah. It's I, don't know. I don't know. My my initial instinct is to do it this like sort of more more basic way, a yeah. so that it's more accessible to people who know basic covering space theory, but not. Uh, that makes sense. Yeah. All right, I want one more. My audio is bad, apparently. Uh, it sounds good to me, and I guess my my ability to pick it up from Discord is not good. So let me try to fix that on my end. It's probably the yeah, problem yeah. In, in the way I set up OBS. Um, Sorry, everyone. Yeah, apologies. <laughs> it is not his fault. Um. Okay, people in chat, does this sound any better if Brandon talks? Testing, testing. Hello, covering space theory. Aurora the homie. This is the most math chat names I've ever seen in a Twitch stream. <laughs> okay, Sarah says that I sound normal. Great. Um, so we were saying, <laughs> You're saying that we don't want to do the homotopy lifting property of vibration, or we don't want to do the long sex of vibration. We're just going to prove the homotopy lifting property and then sort of by hand covering space theory, et cetera, et cetera. Yeah, yeah. I at least that's the that seems more appealing to me. Well, I like the long exact sequence of a vibration, but in terms of just like getting something formalized yeah. and done, I, I'd rather do it this for way. for sure. Um, uh... So. I think the first step, the most important one, is to understand what Thomas Browning's definition of a vibrate of a covering space is. Yes. And if I had thought about this ahead of time, I could have even asked him to join the call, but we'll just have to dig through the code. That's a more realistic lean experience anyway. Yeah, yeah. That sounds good. Um so let's see. I'll Oh yeah, uh wait, I don't know if I should use your, your real name, but pass on this functor. Uh, I have read that book, and the covering group with stuff is super cool. I don't think I want to do it right now, but it would be a fun extension this project. Mm. That would be very cool. That would be very cool. I have yeah. a copy of that book sitting like 20 feet away. Uh, it is time. actually the first topology book I ever read. Whoa, uh, nice. I read it. I had a, a, a class in my freshman year. I needed to write a term paper, and for some reason I was like, I want to do Jordan Curve Theorem, and I found this wacky book that proves the Jordan Curve Theorem, 
and I wrote a huge thing about it, and it was super cool. And it was, yeah, it was not the, it's a very idiosyncratic book. I don't know if I'd recommend doing that, but it was fun for me. It is, it is super fun. Okay, uh, I made the font even larger. Sorry, is that, is that good for you? On my screen, this looks very silly, but uh, it makes sense that this is the way you got to do it to stream. Okay, cool. It might be easier to do. Uh, I'm just not sure. I think it's. I think it's a good idea to just do the most concrete case of the circle and the the real thing first. That makes sense to me. And then we can try and generalize and and adapt. Yeah, yeah. And I, I also for my own experience, I think it would be good to learn how to deal with stuff at a very concrete level and lean. Um, yeah. Uh, so Sarah, uh, I. I was going to say this. The first thing that we need to do is figure out what the definition of a covering map is because it's something weird and complicated. Yeah. Uh, so I did browse I, this I looked... file just a little yeah. bit, and it, it seems like the way this is done is that um, the definition of, of covering space is the way Sarah describes like the normal kind of definition where you want okay. evenly covered neighborhoods with like each point has an open neighborhood whose pre-image is a disjoint union of a bunch of open sets that map homeomorphically down to the base. Um, but then oh so it, it looks like when we say discrete topology i and tease of trivialization if whatever i think we're just saying that it, it like the definition is just in terms of being locally a bundle i times u exactly. which is the same as having evenly covered neighborhoods it's just you know mathematically equivalent defined slightly differently also your stream just got kind of weird maybe just the discord call i can oh. now stream see your whole obs setup oh weird uh Anyways, so yeah, Sarah, the definition of evenly covered use, uses discrete fibers, is what I'm trying to say. Mm -hmm. uh, if we didn't have the discrete topology part of that definition, then it would no longer be a correct definition of being evenly covered. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, and so you, you, we could phrase that in terms of just some like quantifiers, but, but because there's already some lean code that um, does topological fiber bundles, then um, yeah. easier to define it this way. So, so that's the way it's implemented. Um, and then there's a bunch of stuff that I haven't really totally gone through, but um, by which I mean haven't gone through at all. Um, but in the end, there's this, there's this lemma that says uh, essentially that these two ideas of definitions are the same. Uh, a topological fiber bundle with discrete fibers is the same as a covering map, or at least in one direction. Can you go up to the definition of uh, is evenly covered again? Yeah, let's see. And of, like, is covering map and stuff? All right, yeah, so let's start here. So so is evenly covered. Um, okay, as a lean noob reading this, uh, yeah. this is this is a definition of being evenly covered. Uh, it's, a, it's a property of, like, a point uh, X in a, in a set X, which we've assumed somewhere up here is a topological space. Um, so we have some, some points in a topological space X. We have a topological space I. Um, and what it means for this point X to be evenly covered, maybe with respect to I, is that I as a topological space is discrete. And uh, the map F from E to X has a local trivialization around X uh, in, this, in an open neighborhood of X with fiber I. Totally agree with that translation. Some important things here that, like, it's pretty weird that I is part of this definition, at least to me. Mm. Uh, and also, we're only asking for the existence of a trivialization, right? This, this is like a constructive math thing. Lean, like, lean math web is not built to be constructive, but this is a mere existence statement, right? It's not the structure of a trivialization. Right, right. This, yeah, okay. Right, this is, I guess this definition is not like the structure of an even covering, it is the yes. property of being evenly covered, which is which is a mere existence kind of thing. If you do a uh, hash check, hash check is evenly covered. This will show you what the type is, and then in the little thing on the right. Oh dear, unless it's having to recompile all of MathLib, which hopefully it's not. That would be pretty not. frustrating. Yeah, we'll see. I, Sarah, I know it's a constructivity thing. I'm pointing out that the existential quantifier is not the constructive sigma. 
That's all I'm trying to say. I understand that this is the correct definition, even in constructive math. Um, well, if this had compiled, if this finishes compiling, we could see that is evenly covered is going to live in the universe prop. So it's a proposition. Uh, in lean, propositions are very special and different from everything else. Any two members of this, any two proofs of the same proposition are equal. This is this is a lean specific thing. It's not a type theory thing. Um, nice, nice. Yeah, yeah. That makes sense. Um, uh, Sarah, yeah, type this, star this was... is uh, saying that let let lean figure out the universes. It's type U for an unspecified U. Okay. Yeah. So hopefully mm. we can actually write some code, and we yeah, don't just have to I look at this. Was working for me last night. I was able to like yeah. view types of things. Um, I've got this kind of thing. Maybe that's not really the same. Uh, no, that thing that you just pulled up, uh, Sarah. It's definitional. Um, yeah, it's not the same. The hovering over like is evenly covered or whatever is just going to show you the definition. Right, right. Or is this have to actually, actually like check up? the proof? Hmm. Okay. Um, but we can still read the code. We sure can, and. Eventually, this computation Eventually. will terminate. Uh, yeah, it, it just has to like check a lot of MATLAB, I guess. Something something in your setup is wrong. No offense. Yeah, uh, and so that seems plausible. Yeah. All right. Is there is, is there some way for me to like see the progress of that? See see lean plugging and chugging through this very slowly. I don't know. So if you do it in the terminal, it'll show you all of the files it's checking. Mm. Like if you do lean project build, um, yeah, I think that's right. Plugging and chugging. We'll see how that goes. Yeah. So now it'll now it'll show us all of the files it's checking in order. Okay. Uh, okay. Oh, there we go. Got it. All right. Exciting. Uh, you should kill the thing in the terminal. Um, All right. Um, yeah. So, is evenly covered. We can see there's a lot of like meta variables and stuff. Uh, if we do at is evenly covered, it'll be a little easier to read. Okay. At is evenly uh, covered. Yes. Lean, lean is strongly typed. It's very important that it's strongly typed. The type system is the logic. Proving a theorem is the same as giving a term of a certain type. Um, right, so you can see that is evenly covered, takes in, you know, some E and X. These were implicit earlier. It takes two spaces, a map between them, and it takes another space I. And the thing that I wanted to point out was that it produces a prop, right? So is yes. evenly covered of E, X, F, I, E, X, F, little x, I, whatever, um, is a proposition. Right. Right. It produces... Let me see if I'm understanding this correctly. It produces yeah. uh, this dependent type. So for each topological, sp or it produces a, a term of type prop, but this prop is is the dependent product of this like constant family of uh, of types indexed over all topological spaces. Am I reading that correctly? That's Just... right. If you look at two lines earlier, this is the proposition in the context where, you know, I is a well-defined thing, F is a well-defined thing, X is a well-defined thing, mm -hmm. right? So on line 26, that's a proposition. And then the, you're ah, right. The, the type of this is, is evenly covered is a function that takes in a bunch of stuff. It's dependent, yes. right? Because the structure of the topological space on E depends on E. That's right. We're the getting back function this, from e to this X. function from X to dependent product exactly. over topological spaces i prop gotcha yeah okay so the end result so it, is just a proposition it's just a but proposition we have to once we evaluate on the x and the i exactly yeah awesome and, and the, the, the at sign tells lean to like fill in names for these meta variables is that the yeah idea? so at turns implicit arguments into non-implicit arguments mm. cool and it, it's very useful yes Right, that's right. good. Like, I guess sometimes you want to really specify exactly the thing you want for these for these arguments that are that are implicit. For sure. 
if the if the type inference gets confused, you can you need to help it out sometimes. Yeah, it makes sense. All right, so two trivialization. Let's move on. All right. All right. So this this the first thing I'm noticing is that it says non-computable, which makes me think it's going to use some uh, excluded no, middle sorry. or choice or something somewhere. Yeah. Um, yeah, you can see that classical dot sum. Uh, ah, yes, classical dot sum. So it's okay. So this means that we have um, uh, h dot two, and we know somehow that this is a non-empty set or something like that. And this is going to extract an element of that non-empty set. We don't care which one. Is that the right idea? In fact, let's check the type of classical dot sum. Okay. Let's see it. Uh, okay. There's our classical dot sum. So we have. A uh, family of propositions, and we take in a statement of the form there exists an X satisfying this proposition. Mm. Okay, okay. We have for one instance of this kind of thing would be that alpha here is a set, and then we have we we have a claim like there exists an element of this set satisfying the proposition p and, and it gives us an element of the set is that the right idea furthermore there's a thing called classical that some spec you can see it in, in the next function definition yes oh yeah over there so we've got uh here uh hmm, some spec gives us uh Let's see. Returns the fact that there exists an element satisfying this property. No, hold on. No, it's more specific than that. Some spec. We have, for example, a set alpha. A predicate on that set P. Yeah, I'm, I'm losing my parentheses here. Hold on. A predicate P on the set. Uh, uh, well, uh, I'm I'm confused about this comma right here. I, I'm having trouble parsing yeah. this for a sec. This is a this is a dependent function type. It's saying for any alpha, mm -hmm. for any type alpha to prop, right? This depends on the alpha, and for any h with type, there exists an x such that p of x. Mm. You get the result. So given alpha p and h, you get a result of type p of classical dot sum h. I see. So so if I have if I have some proposition, and I know that there's oh yeah I see this is this is the dependent product type. So okay so if if I have that there exists an x satisfying the alpha, it gives me uh, a witness of that claim that that p is true for some some guy. It's not just that there exists an x such that classical dot sum x. That would be the assumption h. It's that for the global choice classical dot sum, we that have p the of proposition the, the predicate actually holds. Yes, yeah, we have a witness of the predicate holding on the classical dot sum of the of the assumption h. Hey, Thomas is here. Hi, Thomas. Thomas wrote the covering space code. Uh, oh, and he's warned us in Discord or in my Discord that uh, covering spaces do not assume assume surjectivity. Okay. Okay. Uh, so Thomas says two trivialization is picking a trivialization using classical at sum, and it also re-indexes the index set in terms of the preimage of x. So this makes sense to me. Uh, so when we assume a neighborhood is evenly covered, we're assuming it with respect to some discrete thing i, right? Mm -hmm. But when you work with like actual covering spaces, you might want to have the fiber be the fiber. Yeah. Does that right. make sense? Like the... you, you want. We your want evenly covered neighborhoods to be covered to be by indexed. the preimage of the point you're looking at. Right. And so if you look at the type two trivialization, it's not just producing a trivialization with respect to I around the point X. Right. It's with producing a trivialization whose X. index set is the preimage of F of X. Yes. I had not caught that on this. Uh, cool. Thanks. And thank you for writing all this code. That is going to be it's really, really cool. It's clear you thought hard about like what the right structure is. Um, 
all right, mem to trivialization base set. This is just saying if you take the canonical trivialization to trivialization, not canonical, but whatever, the global choice, right, to trivialization, that is actually a trivialization around the point X. Right? Mm, I see. Okay. Mem to trivialization base set. So we have uh, we have the assumption that we're evenly covered at X with fiber I. Um, then whenever I have a point in the base set, I, uh, H dot two, what type does that have? Don't uh, worry about the proof. Just read the type. What is the type saying? Like, what is this a proof of? I, then we're saying that whenever H is, whenever we have an evenly covered neighborhood of X with fiber I, then X is in the base so remember, set of that vibration. It, H is not an evenly covered neighborhood. Right. H, H is, is the, not an H evenly is covered claim neighborhood. That that there exists. There an exists. Covering. Yeah. Then then whatever claim we have when we when we do two trivialization to produce an actual even covering, an actual mm -hmm. an actual uh, trivialization of the map, then the base set of that vibration has, or the base set of that local trivialization has yeah. this point X that we started within it. Yeah. Okay. And then to trivialization apply, Thomas is saying basically that it means that we've re-indexed in a nice way, mm. which I don't exactly know how to read this. Uh, so let's see if we can understand it. Let's see. So we they have... start with a point upstairs. Yes. Point upstairs in the total space. We have mm -hmm. uh, an even covering around a neighborhood of the image. Um, no. We know that there exists an even yes. covering. Yes, sorry. In a neighborhood sorry. of the image. I, just, I want to press covering. that. To make no, sure yeah, being... I appreciate that. I appreciate that. It's, it's a good habit for me, to, for me to break here. Yeah. We know there exists an even covering in the neighborhood of the image downstairs. Um, yeah. Then when we do this non-constructive global choice to produce a trivialization around the point, um, uh, then uh, what type does this guy have? What we should do is we should, so we're, what we're doing is we're taking the result of calling h.2 trivialization, mm -hmm. then somehow we're applying it as a function to x, and then somehow we're taking the second field of the structure that that produces. Yes. So I don't know what that means. I think the good thing to do here to understand that is to hash print trivialization. Okay. So hash print, or maybe it might be hash go, we can try uh, both of those, but it, it will tell you what the definition of trivialization is. Ah, there's a bunch of outdoor noise. I hope that doesn't get picked up too loud. Um, uh, we'll give it a sec, maybe. Yeah, okay, big. Okay. Oh, Jesus Christ. Okay. Uh, is is show likely to be any better? <laughs> this is impossible. No, uh, maybe, but I don't think so. Okay. Uh, yeah, actually, no, show, show might be better. I think print might be showing the like most reduced possible form. Okay, let's try show. But we can uh, also check the documentation. Like that. Yeah, that sounds good. Oh wait, we can't check the documentation. No, we can. We can. Trivialization okay. has been has been merged. Uh, so yes, I'm just gonna post the link I sent you in here. Um, this is Nathlib's documentation. It's pretty good. I have found several typos, but like it, it's a good use. It's a good reference. Okay. Um. Here's here's the structure directly in in code, right? We can see. Does this help uh, us understand what happens when we apply a trivialization oh, yeah. to to an argument? So let's see. So probably there's an instance of a coercion from trivializations to functions. Does mm. that statement make sense? That I in in general, sure. Yeah, I. I has collates of fun. If you look down a couple lines on line 294. Yes, I see. Uh, okay. So when we have a trivialization uh, and we want to turn it into a function. Uh, it's functions from oh, Z yeah. to B times F. That makes which sense. Which makes perfect sense. Yeah. When we have a trivialization, that means we have an identification of our neighborhood with a, with a product space. And this coercion yeah. gives us that function. So we did that so coercion like automatically over in the code back here. Um, we did... And then then we're taking the second component of the product. Of the product, right. So we have this trivialization at x. Uh, 
this at is, f of x at f of x thanks this is giving us a uh function uh from the pre-image of the neighborhood yes from the pre-image of the neighborhood to the product of the neighborhood downstairs with the fiber i and then we apply so that saying, to the point yeah. x um in upstairs and then that we take the second component of that and so that'll be uh, a point in uh, which which one which one's coming first in the product uh, i guess i should check the definition uh, over here yeah okay so the definition Based cross fiber so we're getting a point in the fiber space i mm -hmm. Okay, and so this guy is a point in our fiber space I, and that point is supposed to be X. Is that a correct understanding? Well, okay, there's a minor thing, which is that that's not just X, it's the point X along with the proof that it lies in the fiber. The ah. REFL is a proof. Here, REFL has type f of x equals f of x. I see. I see. I see. Right. We need... Uh, okay. So this this dot 2 is somehow... It, it, right. This needs to be... This is, this is not just... Uh, geez, hold on. Because when we do two a two trivialization, trivialization, the fiber that we get is f inverse of the point downstairs, and so what, exactly. we, what we need is that, uh, yeah, yeah, I see. So, so we need here not just a point in the fiber; it's a it's a point in the fiber that is f inverse of f of x, and so we need a proof that x is in f inverse of f of x, and the proof of that is REFL. Yeah, and we can see it. Hey, that's cool. X and f inverse of x. Nice, nice. Cool. All right. All right. So this this is good. It means it means that when we when we have a point upstairs, it lies in the fiber we get by uh, applying this function to trivialization. And this is good, right? As Thomas said, this tells us that mem that the uh, what's it called the two trivialization, right? This non-canonical choice is kind of nice. Yeah, yeah. We might mess up the fiber globally, but at least the point we started with is still where it is. Mm -hmm. Okay. So continuous at is just saying, if you have a function between two topological spaces and it's an even covering near the point f of x, then it has to be continuous at x. Hmm. Which is just going to be unraveling definitions. like. We should be thinking of f as a continuous function already. Right? Yes, and I guess that was not just, really assumed. Really, yep, anywhere. it's just a function e, e to x, which is okay. subtle. Fair enough, but in fact, it is continuous, so that's good. All right. Um, uh, yeah, is evenly covered pre-image. So, if there well, exists an even in lean, right? Like in math, you'd probably just we well, probably just started assuming f is continuous. Yeah. Even if you were being careful, you would just say, if it's a covering map, meaning it evenly covers everywhere, then it's a continuous function. But here, like, because you do have to logically prove it in this way, you might as well prove the lemmas. If it's evenly covered at f of x, then it's continuous at x. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Like, and we have because because we have this fact anyway about about topological fiber bundles that their their projection right. maps okay. are, are continuous. And then we're just saying that. If it's evenly covered with respect, right. If you're evenly covered with respect to some index at i, you can just say you're evenly covered with respect to the pre-image. Right. That makes sense. Okay. All right. So that's our stuff about being evenly covered. And now our definition of covering map is what you might expect. Every point in mm, every point upstairs. No. Every point uh. downstairs is evenly covered with fiber being its pre-image. Yes. Cool. Right, and so like Thomas pointed out in the chat earlier, this is um, a little subtle in that each point needs to be evenly covered with fiber being its own pre-image. So our covering spaces don't have to be surjective and they can have different numbers of sheets over different connected components and stuff like that.
and then we have this helper to actually make something. Because if you think about the definition of a of a covering space as a fiber bundle with discrete fibers, yeah, right. That is sort of what. Hang on, is that actually what this is saying? Thinking. Hmm. So it's saying if you have a family of possible fibers, not just a single model fiber. And, and they're all topological they're, spaces, and they're all discrete. Uh -huh. And we have a trivialization with respect to all of them? No, the, so if for each point X, oh, right, there's I a see. trivialization... With that fiber, with that fiber FX. Um, and for all X, the point is in the base set uh this in math this would be like a weird thing to even state this feels like obvious or or should follow automatically or something it feels like not oh, argument oh, made. i understand what's going on a trivialization if i'm understanding this correctly is local right a trivialization mm -hmm. e so e says for each point x get a local trivialization of this oh, f map at some as this point. product and we don't know which point, but we need to make right. sure that the it base probably, set is, probably, includes the point X. <laughs> yes, it probably doesn't yeah. even assume that E of X is not empty. Right, right. Okay, that makes sense. So this is a trivialization of F on some open subset of the base with fiber FX. And then we need additionally the fact that we're actually trivializing in neighborhoods of our points. So if it's possible to locally at each point that the map F is... Uh, it is locally trivial with some discrete fiber, which there's no coherence assumed between them, then it's a covering map. Right. That's what this theorem says. Okay, makes sense. It's weird, but it makes sense. Yeah, yeah. And it, hey, covering maps are continuous. That's good. <laughs> I'm glad. Sick. All right. Covering <laughs> maps are continuous. Covering maps are local homeomorphisms. Mm-hmm. Yes. They're open, they're quotient maps, all this good stuff. Hang on. Oh, if if they're surjective, then they're quotient maps. Yeah, right, right, right. yeah, yeah. That makes sense. So cool, Thomas. Oh, and I guess this makes sense. If you're non-surjective, that means that you're a zero-sheeted covering map. Obviously. This is true. <laughs> oh, wow. Cool definition. Uh, and then a topological fiber bundle with discrete fiber is the covering up. This is what I thought the MK theorem was saying, but it's the MK theorem is slightly more general. Right, right. Cool. Right, the topological fiber bundle is the MK theorem, but where the family is constant, essentially. Yeah, yeah, I agree. Okay, we understand the definition of a covering space. Sick. That was Only great. took about half an hour. Pretty good. Yeah, I'm, I'm quite happy with that, actually. On my own, that would have taken me much longer. All right, so... Now let's imagine we're trying to do something. Okay, should we should we start by trying to prove that like the map from R to S one is a covering? Is that the thing to do? That's not what I would do. Typically, I start with the theory and then do specific examples. But okay. that's there's no reason for that. I think that's totally a fine fine thing to do. All right, I'm happy give to go us like way. a nice. What? I'm happy to go either way. No, let's do that. Okay. You, you can you know make a commit. We can say we did something today. Cool. I'm going to grab my copy of Introduction to Topological Manifold so that I have all the theorem statements in front of me and we can, you know, assume the appropriate things. All right, sounds good. Okay. So, thinking to myself here, um, one thing I don't know how to do is organize files and stuff. Uh, yeah. In order to make them, I don't know, friendly to people who actually work on Mathlib. So, I'd like to make a new yep. file here to contain the code we're going to write. Um, and I guess I can just do I, that. I, I also don't know how to do that. This is why when I started my project, I just didn't bother using Mathlib. Mm. I guess I'd suggest... Uh, for now, I'm just going to make... Just make it... For right uh, now, just make a new folder. Like, yeah. I was just making a new folder, though, because you're going to want more than one file. Sure, yeah. Okay. Let me... Let me do that. Uh, I made this file and then lost it instantly. Okay. Um, all right. Ah, oh, 
my coworker chat has seen my message that I'm doing the stream yet. Maybe some of them are here right now. I do. Uh, Thomas, we are now starting to prove that uh, the covering map from R to S1, the, the function from R to S1, the exponential, is a covering map. OK, and so let me, let me name that file that. Um, let me call this R covers S1. All right. OK, so let me look here for some cues. Wait. So I will say, uh, often in Lean, it's better to just do things in generality, because you'll mm -hmm. probably need them in generality later. That makes sense. So we could prove a theorem about quotient maps by Lee subgroups being covering maps. Mm, interesting. OK, that would make sense to me. Is, is, if there like are if there exist theorems and stuff developed already that say that like that tell us like what a Lee subgroup is and stuff like that. I think the definition of Lee groups should be in MathLib. We can check that out now. Okay. Yeah. Uh, I it has to be Lee stuff though. Uh, yeah, Thomas. I, I think we probably will use the make constructor or probably even something else. But my only concern is like it's not true in the topological category, and so we will need to use Lee stuff, right? Yeah, that's true. Um, uh, like if you take a, an infinite product of the real line mod an infinite product of of integers. This will not have quotient a, a fiber bundle. Mm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, so, so let's look uh, through MathLib and see if they have Lie groups. All right. Yeah, let's do it. Lee. And yeah, I mean, this is scope creep, but it's not a bad thing inherently. Yeah, yeah. And if the Lie group theory exists, then it should be. If uh, there's not a definition of Lie groups, groups, okay, there is a definition of Lie group. I don't know if there is a definition of Lee subgroup, but if you go to geometry.manifold.algebra. Okay. Uh, Sarah, as I said, it's good to prove things in generality because you might need them. I think Sarah might be mad at me. <laughs> um, R mod S1, R to S1 is a quotient map because it's a quotient of a Lie group by a discrete subgroup. And that's my story and I'm sticking to it. Geometry dot manifold dot algebra uh, dot Lie group computer slow. Look, just be glad I'm not making this prove this for like infinite dimensional Lie groups. <laughs> uh -huh. Oh my god. So the definition of a Lie group. Sorry, not not quotient map, Sarah. I mean, I mean covering map. Uh, the quotient, the quotient of a Lie group by a nice subgroup will be a covering map. Um, <laughs> look, yeah, people that, will we, need we to know that Lie groups already group. for R and S one and such. It'll this will be nice because it'll let us, I don't know, easily translate neighborhoods and stuff around. Um, hopefully, with yeah. the API structures, min results. Uh. Lie group. The unit circle has the structure of a Lie group, and the uh, I think Euclidean space should have the structure of a Lie group, but I don't actually see an instance for it. It would be very disappointing but anyways, if it didn't. We may regret it, but it may also be fun. If you go to uh, geometry.manifolds.instances.sphere, I'm looking in the docs, mm. there is a construction of the Lie group as a, um, as, as a whatever, right, as a one-dimensional Cool, cool. Um, I know we don't need the full generality. We could literally just write it down. But, like, why not? People are being so mad at me. All I do is try to help people. <laughs> uh. Okay. Instances, yeah. I'm seeing that. Instances, real. Uh, Everyone is so mean to me. Always. All of the time. I'm trying to see if there's a an instance of Lie group for, like, finite dimensional vector spaces, which there should be. Ah, yes. There is an instance 
Smooth ring to Liad group. Smooth ring? <laughs> so, so. There, yes. If Incredible. you have a smooth ring, then it's a league, then it's an additive league group, and there's also that is a proof correct. that a field is a smooth ring over itself. I, yeah. I'm a delicate that's... flower. Sorry. Okay. This is, so it was in the chat. Jeez. Oh man, the definition of Lee group. Pretty scary. We don't need to understand it. It's scary. It's got it's 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 manifolds with corners. Just don't worry about it. That's that's what I'll tell you. It is manifolds with corners. It's also over an arbitrary base field with certain properties. It's also over an arbitrary model space, not Euclidean space. Because here's the thing. Here's okay. the thing. When you deal with manifolds, there are so many different kinds of manifolds that you deal with, right? They're all locally modeled on shit, and they have certain transition maps that are in, you know, fucking, what's the word? You have certain transition maps that are in a certain structure group, right? Like, you have a model space, you have a bunch of subsets of it, and you have a bunch of maps between the subsets that form a group of local diffeomorphisms, or local homeomorphisms, right? Mm -hmm. That is the perspective Lean takes on manifolds. Yeah, that makes sense. And it it's very reasonable, because you don't want to have to read through things. Yeah, Pessimist Functor makes the point in chat, you want good structure for the category of, of manifolds that you get. Um, uh, what's Hegel Hegelson's? Hegelson's? Helgeson's? I don't know. Uh, so yeah, loop groups are a thing. We don't need to worry about it. I'm going I'm going to grab ISM and see what the exact conditions on the loop group quotient theorem are. Sounds good. All right. I'm not like going anywhere. It's in the same room. OK, cool. Um, yeah, so how should this group go in my head? We have a Lie group, we have a discrete subgroup, we're closing out by the discrete subgroup, and we want to show that this is a covering map. So we're going to take a point downstairs, we're going to look at its fiber, and then we're just going to take a little open neighborhood downstairs that's disjoint from all the neighborhoods upstairs. Um, the, yeah. This... Properly discontinuous action. Yeah, right. That's right. We need. Uh, mm, okay. We, uh, so we need the act. You're saying we need the translation action of this subgroup on the whole group to be a properly discontinuous action. I guess this is the more general theorem that when you have, uh, like. I was gonna say we should we should just do this for manifolds. There's no reason to restrict to this. It's just that at the end we're going to specialize to the case of a quotient by a subgroup action. All right. So. So. I, I am going to stipulate, we're, let's not get too crazy, let's stick with the base field R, and let's forget about corner manifolds. That Just, sounds I good don't, to me. We can generalize later if we need to. I'm, I'm very happy with that restriction. Um, okay. Yeah. Right, so we want, we want this fact that when we quotient a manifold by a properly discontinuous action of a group, then we get Smooth a covering... Free a smooth free action that is proper, sorry. If G is a Lie group acting smoothly, freely, and properly on a manifold, the orbit space is a smooth manifold. Uh, where's properly, dis no, properly discontinuous should come from being proper and discrete, I think. That sounds right. So, uh, so the general theorem, the general theorem is what I just said, that a Lie group acting smoothly, freely, and properly on a smooth manifold has quotient a smooth manifold. Hmm. And it's pretty involved. Do you have a copy of ISM? I do as a PDF somewhere. Let's see. Yeah, you should pull it up because I I'm not going to narrate this theorem. It's really long. Yeah. Um... But I think it's a first goal, a good first goal. Yep, that that's the proper continue proper action condition of Pessimus Functor. It's pretty messy. But it should it should be pretty free in the case that we're in. You know, eventually. Eventually. Someone is getting mad that we're talking about group actions when we're talking about a covering space theory thing. I think that's not fair. I think you could expect some groups to show up. Like you have deck transforms and shit. It's a reasonable thing to do, I think, for this project to try to prove that there's this nice class yeah. of examples of uh, of covering spaces. Um, I gotta find my yeah. big weird folder of PDFs. Uh, what's the generalized version you're thinking of? I, I don't have it in mind. Or I don't know the one you're talking about, Pessimus Functor.
Yeah, I think if we can formalize, uh, like as a first goal, formalize theorem uh, 21.10 in ISM, that, that would be pretty fun. Okay. Uh, da. Yeah, we have to do things with foliations and nonsense. Never mind, we're not bringing this theorem. It's too hard. All right. I think you need Frobenius theorem, which is mm. bad. That would be a pain. All right, let's just go. I'm also happy let's to just go very, three. very low level. We're just going to prove that R covers S1. In an I got too excited. Way. Yeah. Okay. All right, so I need, yeah, no, no, no. This is a hard I need the real line. I need S1, and I need to build the map between them. Um, so now I need to figure out where to get those things. Let's see. Uh, would this be in geometry or topology, do you think? Uh, the R1 covers S1? Or uh, what? Or I, like, I want the object R, and I want the object S1. I'm hoping that those already are defined and exist oh, somewhere nice as topological spaces. Definitely. If you import, like, what, what was the thing that I told you to import with the Lie groups, like the Lie group instance thingy? Mm, yeah, uh, geometry, let's see. That was geometry manifolds algebra, like dot Lie group dot structures. Those two are the things you want. Okay. And this will give you the structure of a topological group and a Lie group and everything on there. Okay. Geometry manifold. And like, yeah, it would be fun to do foliation shit, but I don't want to prove Fabinus's theorem. <laughs> it's hard. <laughs> Uh, Lee group. I for some reason I thought this theorem was like kind of easy. Like I don't know elementary smooth manifold stuff. I didn't remember that it used Frobenius. <laughs> I'm being bullied. Uh, so geometry manifold algebra Lee group, and then the same thing but dot structures. I think that's the one that has S one. Let's try that. Okay. Structures. Cool. Let's take a peek at that. Yes, smooth rings, quite. Um, uh huh. Uh, I'm not sure we have S1 in here. Um, maybe I definitely saw here. the structure of the of a Lie group on it. Oh, sorry, sorry, sorry. I gave you the wrong reference. It's geometry manifold instances sphere. Hmm. Instance. But we do want structures. Okay, okay. That's also we we also want the structures one instead of the Lie group one. Just dot, just change the structures. That's what has the structure of a of a smooth ring or whatever. Okay. Sounds um. Good. All right. So yeah, plus functor. I literally I just looked at Lee and I saw like the word foliation and I was like, mm, this probably uses theory. I mean, we ha it, it talks about the infinitesimal generator of a flow, and I don't think that stuff is done in Lean yet. Big stuff. Is this do we like? Is this the right way to go to to import this whole manifold structure of S one? Like, what if we just use that S1 is is a quotient space of R, and we like define it that way, or a quotient space of the interval or something like that. We don't want to do that. We okay. want to use the geometric definition of S1. All right. Fair enough. Uh, uh, I'll just say, like, if you can import analysis.complex.circle. That probably mm -hmm. defines S1 as like a subspace, subspace of, uh, of C or something. Uh, complex space. Yeah. And that would be I just helpful, figured, I think, in that we can, we can then define the exponential map pretty straightforward, and then it would be continuous by magic and stuff yeah. like that. The exponential map might be defined already. Let me search circle. Yeah, but apparently, according to Thomas, the circle is called the circle. And it's, it's defined in analysis.complex.circle. Mm. OK. Circle like, to units and x to map circle, which is x mm. ti, is there. That'd be good, right? That that feels like the the the, the map to use. Um, yeah, that's the one we want. 
it's going to have uh, fibers. You know, it's, it's not going to be 2 pi IT, but that's sort of artificial anyway. Yeah, that, like, that'll cares? be fine. Yeah. Oh, it's it's already going to be in, imported by one of the things you imported up. Oh, okay. Unless you want to get rid of them. I, I don't know. If I if I put it here anyway, will it will it complain that there's too many no. repeated import? No, it's, it doesn't care. All right, I'll just throw it there. There's a way to check for redundant imports, but I forget it. All right. We'll find out one day. Um... So yeah, x underscore map underscore circle is the, the covering. The thing we want to prove is the covering. Sick. Exp. Yeah. Okay. X map circle. Is a continuous function from R to the circle. Excellent. Oh, yeah. All right. So how do I start this? Am I just going to like write down that, I'm, that I have a theorem? And then we're going to try yeah, to prove the no, I, I think that's a good idea. Okay. So write down theorem blah, blah, blah. And then you're going to use sorry at the end. So we probably want to use the make definition or not not make but the um discrete fiber bundle one right or do we want make i think we want make sorry I'm, I'm going back and forth i mean make is more general and so it is at least as easy to use um yes well that's not always true okay uh, fair enough. The, the thing i had in mind was just that for the uh, fiber bundle thing we would need to use the definition of a fiber bundle whereas this is just sort of laying it out in terms of trivializations and sets that's true and and also it's nice that we allow our fiber to vary and that for each point we can use the well i don't think we want to do that i want i think we want to have f be the constant family z mm. okay that's fair it just seems easier to me um hmm. okay i mean we could we could literally use the the pre-image under the exponential right which we can identify easily but i guess we can right. it for z also it's also easy to to homeomorph z onto those fibers um, i think z is easier to work with sure. is my thinking like the fiber has all this extra structures like a subtype like it, it, you know the elements are these pairs with a proof in them mm -hmm. z just seems like a less complicated object and it gives us that everything has sort of the same fiber and that should be easier to work with more uniformly that's my thinking so i want uh topology dot covering uh, and I want to say is covering map uh, oh, what was this called uh, map exp map circle it's kind of underscore or something or sorry you're gonna want a theorem name right oh yeah you're right um, okay what should I call this? Uh, is covering map underscore x map circle. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds good. I'm really bad at naming things. How about circle covering? Sure. Uh, or how about x covers circle? Yeah, sounds good. Okay, and then I need uh, colon. Yes. Cool. And so instead of sorry, I like to do begin admit end. Because then you can sort of see the goal in tactic mode. Uh, so this would be on a new line. Uh, so begin, and then next line, admit. Admit is the tactic that solves the goal. Uh, okay. I was hoping and now we wait. For me, but yeah, let's see. I'm going to take like a five minute break, and then I'll be back. Cool. All right, let me pull up chat, see what people are saying. Oh, cool, cool. I like that theorem pessimist functor. <laughs> yeah, sorry, sorry is the keyword that tells Lean to ignore the goal. Uh, it's like maybe undefined in Haskell. Um, oh. 
Oh, geez. Linus, my computer is slow. Linus is also not the fastest, but this is, this is really the fault of my computer. I'm going to comment out these lines. Maybe that will help. Uh, We're still waiting. Uh, Thomas, what's the what's the difference between between sorry and admit? Uh, sorry is a term, and admit is a tactic. So really, the question oh, you're see. asking is. I I, okay. I, yeah, okay. We're in tactic mode here because we did begin end. So admit exactly. is the tactic we want to use. Um, Thomas says we can also use sorry in tactic mode. Maybe there's some sugar there. I didn't know you could do that. I thought if you use sorry in tactic mode, it would interpret sorry as a tactic and then break. Mm. But that might not be true. That's there just might be how a my mental model. Sorry, that is exact sorry. <laughs> That's overriding sorry. Yeah. yeah. Um. So, Thomas said sorry. Pets uh, it's sort of hard to know. The answer is look through the documentation, ask people in the Zulip, right? Like, ask, hey, has this been formalized? Um, but yeah, th there's not really. I mean, there is a guide of here's exactly what's been formalized in Lean, and it's the documentation that I linked at the start of the screen. All right. Which so look again. Let's see. Uh, here we, go. we can see the goal, and we're done. We have a proof. Wow, so, we did it. That was that so was easy. So easy. <laughs> All right. Yeah. Cool. Um, um. So probably, you know, testing the waters. We're gonna want to use make, right? This is what I suggested. Make with a. Uh, I'll post the uh, docs again. Thanks. Somehow the thing on my keyboard was fundamental ground point. Thank you, Sarah. Um, so yeah, we're probably going to want to use make, right? So do you know the refine tactic? Hmm, I uh, vaguely yes. So refine so I would just is a tactic using where that. it's like exact, but you put in holes and then it gives you goals for those holes. Yep. Okay, so uh, I guess the I need to understand what exactly the the holes I want are. Um, so we want to show his covering map. map. His covering map is a for all X. Um, That's true. But remember, I, I think it'll be easier to use make. I think it'll be easier if we have a single consistent fiber. Oh, OK. Wait, so how does make work? What does that do? That, so make is the thing that Thomas defined in the uh, covering. Oh, I lead. see. The, right, right. Right, the MK. Yeah, OK. So we want oh, to use refine. We want to use, yeah, I, I, refine MK. I was understanding you for a second, then I forgot. Uh, right, so we want to refine MK. MK has some complicated type. Uh, if I just say refine MK, will it do the most general thing? That might not uh, be well No, defined. but also, MK is not the fully qualified name. MK is the name in the na namespace covering app or something like that. Okay, so, so I want to do... probably want to check. Uh, yeah, let me try to find MK. MK is here in namespace is covering map. Cool. So we've got is covering map. Also, uh, you should get rid of the admit now. Just like comment it out so that it's not. Leading will give you syntax errors. And also, if you don't have a comma afterwards, yes. after the thing, the tactic you do, yeah. Right. Okay. Uh, so, MK this guy right so refine does not just try and like do the most general thing or whatever apply right. i think will do what you're thinking mm, that's true okay let me let me do that and then we can figure out how to use refine and i, I think you'll see why i preferred re apply to refine here in a sec wait what hmm oh yeah so this is part of what i was thinking Lean does not know what f is. Lean w mm. is going to try and create a goal for f, right? It's going to ask you to produce that as one of the goals produced by this tactic. Yes. However, because 
is a type class that one of the arguments is found by be a type class resolution, right? The for every point in the base, the fiber is a topological space, yes. right? It can't do that when the f term is a meta variable. That makes sense. Okay. So this is one of the reasons I wanted to use for fine. More specifically, I just thought it would be clearer if we specified what f was before we applied. So apply should also work yeah. so if let's you just do apply with like lambda underscore z. Yeah. X map circle. No, uh, wait, is that right? I thought the first argument was the oh, big F. Sorry. Uh, what is see. the first argument? Let's find out. <sighs> Computer slow, sorry. It's covering that. MK. So first, the first argument map, is the big the first... F, you're right. Yeah, okay, so we're going to... We're gonna no, constant... but no, little f is actually an implicit thing up above. Ah. The first map is the little f. Is the little f, okay. So it, we want it to be... We want it to be x the constant. Circle. Yes, and then the constant z function. Okay, so we're going to go lambda i I don't know why it didn't do that for me. Oh, no. Oh, well, I probably shouldn't share the bad thing that just happened to my friend, but calls suck. Mm. That is extremely true. Um... Okay, do I have to use a variable here? And no, uh, you don't have to. Yeah, that's the correct syntax. Underscore would also work. Either way is fine. It should. Uh, yeah, Lean was able to to figure out what the type class topological space Z was, which is good, right? Oh man, yeah, it's chugging. Good. We have two goals. I have, I have a little wiggle here. Maybe that's it's weird. Just, maybe it's just mad that you I know, didn't prove the theorem. I think Lean's just chugging. All right. But let's see. I mean, invalid lambda expression. Oh, you used a dot, not a comma. Oh, it's a comma. It's, thanks. It was hard for me to see. Yeah, yeah. Uh, okay, thanks. That. And now, now it, as I said, I can figure out what the uh, thing is. Here's the weird thing. The order of the goals that you might naturally expect are swapped. Mm -hmm. Right. We've... This, is another, this is another reason that I'd prefer to use refine instead of apply. Mm -hmm. I don't totally understand why, but apply swaps the order of the goals. Weird. And okay. if you have meta variables, like if some later goals depend on earlier goals, this gets confusing, confusing to read. Nice and base set. So our two goals right now are uh, every point in the circle is in the base set of the, of the trivialization. And the and uh, other goal is that we actually uh, have a trivialization around every point. Exactly. Yeah. Okay. So we definitely so, want to swap those goals. So if I do refine yeah. here, um, what other arguments did MK need? Just those two. Oh, okay. I mean, there's other type class resolved arguments, but you don't put, provide those with refine. And yeah, it'll yell at you right now. Let's actually take a minute to understand this this error. Okay. So can you explain to me why it's giving you this error and what it's saying? Let's see. Invalid type description. Term has type. Okay, it's expected to have type is covering map, but instead we have, it still wants more arguments. I, I want to, I need to put in holes for it to fill, like uh, how many for all, if I put in one hole. What if I put in two hole? Sweet. Okay, my understanding is that MK takes these arguments and then two more arguments and produces the right thing. And to use refine, I want to I want to fully evaluate. I want an expression that would fully evaluate to give me the actual goal with holes for stuff that I need to fill in. I would say that's correct. Cool. And then I think personally, when I'm writing code like this, I prefer to have uh, curly braces when I have new goals. All right. So if you put curly braces there, mm. it's going to just isolate the first hole. Right. I do have two goals, so it would be good to have two goals. All right. I'm eating chips and trying to mute myself so it doesn't come on the speaker, but sorry everyone if you hear crunching sounds. That's, yeah, goals for holes. All right. Goals uh, for holes. 
Sarah, shut up. <laughs> um, so, given a point in the circle, how do we how do we produce a trivialization? Okay, this well, this syntax of up arrow circle means a point in the circle. Uh, so what's the type of circle? Let's 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 ah. click on that and see what type lean shows us. Good question. Um, how do I do this? It's a submonoid of C. A submonoid uh, is not a type. Okay, I see. Submonoids have can have a coercion to set, to sets right subsets of the type. Right. And subsets have a coercion to type. Right. And this this up arrow is the coercion. Coercion. Yeah. So coe sort submonoid type. Gotcha. Cool. Okay, so this is a point in the circle is because we've mm -hmm. coerced the circle as a submonoid into an actual type. And, and then... a point in the circle means a, a term of type or a, a thing of type uh, C and a proof that it's in the circle. That right? it's, a, it's a pair yeah. of those two things. Yeah. Okay, so when we, when we uh, when, the way I would do this as a noob is I would say yeah. like intro H, intro P or something. And then I know P is going to have mm -hmm. additional structure. It's going to be a pair. Um, mm -hmm. So maybe I can try to expand that out. Um, mm -hmm. How do I do this? P H or something? Is that the right syntax? So that's this is a very natural thing to try to do, which is why there's a tactic for it. If you use R intro instead of intro, mm -hmm. it'll do the exact thing you expect it to do. Sick. Okay. Maybe I do R. R stands for recursive. Oh, 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 I see. Instead of I intro a thing and then I recurse into the into the inductive structure of this type and I yeah, actually intro the, the two arguments to the constructor. Yep. Sweet. So conceptually, why is the circle evenly covered? Right? Like what's your proof if I asked you to prove this on a blackboard? Okay. Right. So I have a point on the circle. I'm gonna define a little let's see. So I know I know I'm on the unit circle. I'm going to define a little teeny neighborhood of it, like straight up by hand, like I would write this point as e to the i t for some t and r, and then I would take the little neighborhood that I get uh, as the image of like uh, a little subinterval in r from like t minus 0 0.01 to t plus 0 0.01, like something explicit like that. Um, and then Let's see. I know that this, um, I don't know, maybe like <laughs> in my head, the way this is happening is that the exponential map moves at constant speed. And, uh, okay. Interesting. <laughs> and so uh, I can explicitly identify the fiber of my point as being like, it, I don't know, a consequence is that the map is periodic or no, the map is periodic, it moves at constant speed, and then I can identify the fiber as exactly this, like the point, the, the particular point in the parameters that I started with, plus multiples of two pi i. Um, I understand what you're saying. This is very reasonable, and you could formalize this argument in lean. What's easier to do is to take the biggest possible evenly covered neighborhood. Mm. Because it's going to be less complicated than a small neighborhood. Okay. You don't need to worry about, you know, t minus epsilon, t plus epsilon, right? All right, so we're gonna to try to do the so biggest the possible evenly covered neighborhood, which is the circle minus the antipodal point. Exactly, that is what I would do here. Right, that is at least easy to define, which is nice. And then we're gonna show that exactly. it's evenly covered using a little so, bit of... So, let's use the constructor analysis. tactic. Using yeah, maybe. Which tactic? Constructor. Constructor. tries to apply. Okay. Let's see what that is going to do for us. Hmm. So. In reverse order, it's kind of confusing. This M1 is the thing we actually have to construct. Uh, I need that this is a set. We have this from some coercion that happened. That one should be kind of easy. Um, what? This final goal, goal number six here. You know what that final goal says in words? Uh, the final goal says that uh, this 
type, uh, which was the coercion of the circle all the way down to just being a type, has the structure of a set. I, oh, actually, I actually don't is, know what set means in lean, but that's my that's my thing. That rule is asking you for a subset of the circle. Set alpha means a oh, predicate on alpha. I see. Set set means a predicate. Okay, so this is where we produce the subset that is called question mark M1. Exactly. Okay, so the thanks. first thing we should do is to produce a set in the circle. Yeah, let's do it. So before we do the constructor, it's going to be easier if we start out by saying, like, let you with type set circle equal. Okay. Does that make sense? Yeah, sure. Let you set. Uh, can I just say circle? Will it do the coercion automatically? Yep, because yep, set takes in an argument of type, type, and so it will attempt to coerce that term to a type. Sweet. Uh, and then what's the syntax here? Let you equal? You could actually just do the comma. Let's see what happens if you do the comma, and also uh, comment out the constructor bit so that it's not giving us errors. Okay. All right, so when we do this, now I have a goal to produce u. Um, yeah, you could also do the colon equals and then just the definition of the term. Gotcha. Okay. Which so is probably easier here. Okay. So I want to do a set complement. Well, actually, first, the thing we need to do is take our point and take the antipodal point and produce a proof that that point is in the circle, right? But I think because the circle is a subgroup, you should just be able to do minus, minus p. Hmm. I think we'll. S oh, it's a, but it's a multiplicative submonoid, right? That's the way it's happening. And the yeah, you're right. You're right. Sorry. That's not minus. Um, yeah. So I think we really need hmm. to we need to prove that this antipodal point is in the circle, which shouldn't be that yeah. hard, right? We, that's just going to be a little yeah. bit. That's going to be a thing where presumably the circle is defined by the fact that the norm is one, and then the norm of yeah. negative p is p, is the norm of p. So here's here's, here's some hacks in a let you can introduce uh, holes, like you can in Refine. Mm, okay. So we can do set circle equals, like set.unuv, or set.unuv minus, or just the complement of. Both of these are possible, set.compl. Compl. Right? No. Why not? Uh... Okay. Uh, I guess backslash C, or backslash compl is what we want. Backslash compl? Yeah, try that. Thomas is telling us to multiply minus one. Ooh. Yeah. Okay. So now if we put that. Exactly. So now we can define the set, and it's just going to be a one point set. Oh, you can do that. I was thinking of something slightly different. Okay. What's the. So, How do I do a one point set? Literally just do set brackets. Sweet. Okay, and I'm going to do and minus then, P. Okay. Eh. But it's going to yell at you for this. Right, because it doesn't know. So instead, what we're going to do is we're going to do... How do you, so how would you construct a term of type circle? How would you write one down? Well, good question. I actually don't know how yeah. a circle is So it's defined. the same way you intro it. Oh, uh, it's a subtype. Submonoid.unitsphere. So, sorry. Not, not the circle, but the coercion of circle to type. Ah, okay. Uh, uh, don't go digging into the definition. When you entered it, you actually did exactly the right thing, right? It's a point in C along with the proof. Yes. So let's write down the point and then leave a hole for the proof. Mm, okay. Like this. Uh, should be Not minus quite. P. Yeah. And there we go. Okay, minus P. And the thing we have to produce is that minus P is in circle. Yeah. And, and poles are still as a matter of, that's okay. As a matter of personal taste, I would do a swap here. Swap swaps two goals. That sounds swaps good. the first and second goal. Yeah, that's what we want. Cool. And I would now also just that. because it's like a small, simple goal, I would put it in in uh, curly braces. Mm, okay, sure. No, sorry, swap needs to happen first because it's operating on the level of like. Yeah, thanks, thanks. That's where we have. Yes. Okay, now we have our goal. And here's where we're going to prove the fact that minus p is in the circle. Yeah. Okay. So I use curly braces when either I'm splitting into two big goals or I'm handling a small goal. Mm -hmm. That makes sense. Here's some magic. Try doing simp uh, circle at hv dash. Okay. Uh, you'll need brackets around the simp or around the circle. Sorry, square brackets. Simp circle at simp is a magic tactic. Uh, no, literally the word at. At. Uh, and then 
the two hypotheses we want to simplify that and then it's backslash v dash is the goal it's the term step yeah yeah it's simp whatever okay yeah that makes sense okay so this guy's that that's just a symbol that means whatever the goal is yep and uh, you can see it in the goal oh yeah i see yeah that's okay uh, so so let's simp some more stuff let's simp sub mono to units here gotcha so we're just we're just uncurling uh, unfurling definitions here to say yes but, uh, sorry so you can do it all in the same brackets that's oh, a okay. that's a list cool cool uh we are unfolding definitions but at some point something special is going to happen that's going to do more than unfolding definitions i think uh so well, maybe mind. not uh, uh unit sphere i think unit underscore sphere. Unit sphere. Nice. Okay. Whoa. Yeah, it did a magic for us. Yes, that is the magic I was waiting for. Okay. So Lean, it did magic. Uh, try doing desimp instead. If we if you do do desimp, it will literally only do uh, definitional stuff, mm, and then we'll that, see yeah. how magical it is. Great. Great. Okay. So. Okay. Dist. So it's only a tiny bit of magic. Distance. Okay. The, so the we, only magic that it did was simplifying. So try simplifying. <laughs> yeah, Sarah, it does algebra for you. That's the simplifier. It's pretty cool. Uh, try doing dist in the decent. Okay. All right. So we're gonna now we're gonna unroll additionally the definition of the metric, and that will give us unclear. It, it didn't do anything. Okay, that's messed up. Fine, we're, we're, we'll just use sim. So. All right. All right, easy enough. There it is. Simp. Yeah, short for simp five. And then we should be done. Uh, we are literally done. Yep. Great. Or if you want to be super cool, you can just do assumption. Nice. Okay. Um. Anyways, yes, simplifier extremely powerful. It it um, there's a huge library of lemmas that it will look through to try and apply. So it'll definitely simplify things you tell it to, and also look for things like, oh, the distance from p to zero is the same as distance from minus p, minus p to zero. Well, the distance from p to zero is the same as the absolute value, and then the absolute value of negative p is the absolute value of p. Right, right. Those are the two rules. If you do simp question mark, it'll show you exactly the, the lemmas that it used. Ooh, sick. And I, I guarantee you it's going to be the two I just said. How do I see that? Well, it's still running. Oh, I see. Ah, uh, yeah. So complex.absneg, complex.normec.abs, uh, yeah. something about the distance somewhere. Oh, memsphere zero if if norm. So it didn't actually use the thing about the distance. It used the lemma that characterized when you're a, a, a member of the sphere at radius zero. Mm -hmm. uh, sorry, at center zero. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Cool. Cool stuff. All right. Easy. Uh, mm -hmm. Great. Now we have a goal. Which mm -hmm. is... Oh, that we have to produce a trivialization with fiber Z. So... Okay. Exactly. It's topological fiber bundle dot trivialization. Yeah. So, so there now, should be something. Now I kind of want to run constructor to see what that means. But it is going to give us some weird order of our goals. Mm -hmm. Right. And so we want to set circle. We have the set circle. I want to. I want to use. I want to use that U. Okay. So how am yeah. I going to? So one thing you could do is swap six. Swap six, exact U. Ah, uh, okay. Swap six, exact U. All right, so that uses our U. Exactly. Uh, but that's probably not the nicest way to do it. I would probably do this via, via refine. Um, instead of constructor, do refine and then like six underscores. No, sorry, you want this in, in the, um, the bracket thingies. Right, so you're constructing an inductive type. Right, so you want to use L angle, R angle. 
Mm. I want to use L angle. Sorry, hold on. So here yeah, sorry, I, I'm not explaining this well. No, all good. Here I am uh, at trying to construct a trivialization. A trivialization is an inductive type. And so what I want to do, right, I'm not and trying to use refine field. where I apply a function. I'm trying to refine where I produce a, a, a constructor applied to six arguments. So I can do that with the it's refine. The function. It's applying the function trivialization.make. Right, OK. That's what this is syntactic sugar for. Is this the right kind of thing? Yep. Cool. All right. And so now I should have a bunch of goals, and I can stick you in the correct goal. Um, so the, the second one. But you can actually do this on the level of the refine, not using tactics. Yes. <laughs> OK. OK, I need is open you. That one should be pretty easy to do. Uh, we need this local homeomorphism. We need um, something. In the local homeomorphism, uh, the domain it's defined on is the pre-image of our neighborhood U. Right. Does that make sense? Uh, local homeomorphism, circle uh, in the local homeomorphism. Uh, where did that, how, how did we see that from here? So, oh, the question here. mark M1, yeah. Yeah, gotcha. That is what's called a meta variable. I don't want to explain it. Yeah, okay. But I think I, you can I, get the gist I get the it. vibes, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Partially defined homeomorphism, yep. I'm answering Sarah's question in chat. Oh, yeah, thanks. Yeah, I appreciate that. I'm, I have my brain full trying to understand these things. I fully, fully understand. <laughs> okay, so cool. All right, so we got a bunch of goals. The easy one to me is is open you. Yeah. Um, I think that's the one we should do. We should use the fact. I don't know. In you know, in my head, this comes from the fact that we have a subspace of a Hausdorff space. We have a one point set in that subspace. Therefore, it's closed. And then the complement of that set is open. Here's a fun thing. There's a lemma that is t t one point closed or something like that. I'm trying to find the exact statement in the okay. documentation. So it might actually be better if you go to the definition of t one. Wait, is it t one that those points are closed? It is, right? Uh, T1, yes, points are closed, that's right. So open the map with docs, go to T2, T1, T1, and then that's look at the, in the page for that. Topology. And literally the second lemma on the page is, j just look at the documentation, search that, don't look through, through the source code. Okay. T1. But literally the second thing, the second lemma after the definition of T2 space is, is open compul singleton. Oh, nice, okay. Uh, how do I... I'm not having a good time searching the docs, honestly. Um, what do you mean? Maybe I'm. Maybe I'm not doing this correctly. At, in the in the documentation page, there's a little mm -hmm. search box up at the top. Yeah. And if I put in like T1 there, I get a huge list of results, all of which are not helpful. Like, I. I That's I, weird. I, if I put in T1, then the first result is T1 underscore space. Huh. So try T1 underscore space. Maybe I'm. T1 space, let's see. Maybe I'm in the wrong search box somehow. Um, Possibly. I'm probably in the wrong search box. Let me try to just go to the main docs page. Let's see if there's a better search box there. Push your, your screen on Discord if you want me to take a look. Oh, yeah, sure. Let me do that. I can't believe like 15 people were watching this at one point. That's crazy. That is actually crazy. Yeah, thanks for being here, folks. I don't know how many people are on stream right now. A lot of fun. Okay. Uh, so, yeah. Upper right, T2. T2. Let's see what. So if I put in T2 here, 
What do I get? Maybe that you used an uppercase T. Ah. We'll see. We'll see. I'm curious what the result is. Sorry, I, I, I already uh, inputted some backspaces that will take a while to show up. T2 space. I see. It was the it was the uppercase T. That is really funny. Okay. Yeah. Right. No. I see. You got a bunch of Turing machine shit. Cool. Let me switch you back to lean. Right. Okay. So there's T two space, which is in topology. It'll, it'll be in there. Something who's already imported it. That's a good point. Almost surely. Probably. Yeah. Would be would be impressive if it hadn't. Okay. So now I gotta wait for this documentation page to load. Generally, you don't want to change your imports because it will take a while. Mm, that makes sense. All right. So we've got T1 spaces, T2 spaces. Uh. Uh, if you know Chase, who has an extremely demented Twitter account, uh, he is working on some separation axiom stuff. Oh, cool. I'm vaguely, I see him around sometimes. Uh, yeah. It's the only account I follow on main that retweets actual porn. <laughs> okay. I... Go find T. T to do. So, local homeomorph. What are you looking at? I'm trying to find this theorem that the complement of a of a singleton is. Let's go, open. Team Lean Stream. Oh yeah, it's it's just is open compul singleton. Is it's literally the second lemma. Is open compul. Singleton. Yes, I see. Okay. So try just doing exactly that. It doesn't take any arguments. Exact. This is topology. Apparently, we have taught someone new tricks. No, no arguments, no name, just. It's just is open compul singleton. Okay. Let's try that. If it has been imported, this will work. If not, we're going to need to wait a minute again. Okay. Hashtag team lean stream. We need to get that trending. <laughs> I'm ready for that to show up on Twitter tomorrow. Number one hashtag in the US. Hey, it worked. Okay. Cool. And we can even put it in the refine, right, as the third argument. Oh, yeah. That makes sense. And does it make sense why it's possible for it to not have any arguments? Hmm. Like, you Actually, might expect no. it to take... Okay, yeah, I'm going to yeah. ask this. Let's let's find out. I'm going to the definition of is open compul singleton. Just look at the, the docs page. Okay. If you look at the definition, you might accidentally edit something, and then you might need to recompile. <laughs> this is what fair. I've learned. Okay. Thomas Dangerous is telling move. us to squeeze our simps, and he's right, but I haven't done that yet. Uh, there's something like squeeze underscore simp, which will not make it run the same computation each time finding the proof. Mm. So go back up to simp and do squeeze underscore simp. S not swap, simp. Oh, yeah, sorry. Uh, squeeze. I'm just lazy. I don't like learning new things. That's why I'm in grad school. Squeeze simp. Squeeze simp. Oh, uh, it does all this, but prints a simp only invocation. So yeah, I think it's just going to be, it's going to print out the thing we mm, saw earlier, and then we'll we'll use that. And then it won't need to search Instead the of... huge library time. Yeah, okay, that makes sense. That's part of why my code in the browserfix point theorem thing takes so long to run, is because I just didn't do that. <laughs> uh... Mm, okay, so so is open compul singleton has this implicit argument point in the space? It has, there's a lot of implicit arguments, right? Yeah, yeah. Um, and the 
But so how, I guess it just, okay, the goal it wanted to fill was is open complement of minus p. Then it wanted an implicit argument of form minus p in circle, which we had, and so we used it. Sorry, Sarah was saying something in the chat that I was replying to. Could you repeat that? Uh, yeah, so... Okay, so is open compl singleton uh, has type is open complement of a singleton set. And so when we use this as the exact, as, as our, uh, to fill in that goal, then it said, okay, the type I'm trying to produce is is open complement of minus P. And this implicit argument to is open compl singleton uh, would then have type minus P and uh, minus P is an element of circle. Uh, sort of. doing the exact same reasoning that you are right now, right now, where you're figuring out what what do the arguments have to be? Yeah, yeah, right. It's it's type inference backwards with this with these implicit. I think uh, this is unification. I don't. Sure. I'm pretty sure that's what it's called. I'm but really bad unification at these words, and Sarah will yell at us. Yes, about yell at me when I'm wrong. Uh, so click on the simp only on the right in the tactic state. Okay. Oop. And then we'll replace your squeeze simp, and it won't need to run super long every time now. Nice. That is useful. Yeah. I really should just do that. I, I don't know why I haven't been. It just looks messy to me. I don't know. I'm I'm very silly. Okay, and if we if we needed to is open compl singleton, are... we could take an explicit argument if we did at is open compl singleton minus p or something like that. Yes. Gotcha. Uh, Sarah, the thing I may or may not have gotten wrong is I said that when you write a thing with an implicit argument and lean checks it against like an explicit type and it figures out what all of the implicit arguments have to be and all that, that that is doing unification. That's my understanding. I, I don't actually understand unification, so that might be wrong. Um, so this is good, right? And it, it's so far it's going very similarly. Like, as you said, this is how you prove it in a blackboard with the is open compl singleton, right? Mm -hmm. It's the same logic. Mm -hmm. um, now, local homeomorph, we're probably going to want to check the docs. Uh, and uh, see what that uh, structure is, right? Yeah. Okay. As Sarah said, it's maybe better to call it a partial homeomorph. Um, yeah. Because it, it it's not, not the same as a local homeomorphism. Yeah. It's a it's a it is a partial homeomorphism. Yeah. Yeah. Jesus Christ! What's a local equiv? This so much data. Holy shit. Ah. Okay, this is fine. We'll be fine. It looks like we are going to want to define the image. Wait, I'm confused now. Is local equiv. So the target of the local equivalence should be you, right? The target of the local equivalence. Should be this set you. Yeah, that's right. Oh, I know why I was confused. It's that it's it's not a, a homeomorphism between you and the pre-image. It's a homeomorphism between you times V and the pre-image. Yeah, that's right. Okay, yeah, okay. Right. I'm on board now. Uh, yeah, so, yeah. So we'll likely want to write down what the pre-image is, right? Mm -hmm. Like, in, in, before we, we do this we for fun. write it down explicitly, yeah. Before we do this or fine, just after the, the U thing, we're going to write this down. So what is the pre-image, right? Mm, okay. We, do we want to we wanna write this down? So we, we're going to have to pick a particular pre-image of P, right? Um, no, we're writing down the pre-image of the set U. Uh, yes. So we, we want to write down the pre-image of the set U abstractly, just like let... So right, we, we could just define it as the pre-image, mm -hmm. but I think it'll be simpler if we define it as, you know, a certain subset of the real line, okay. right? So this will be... But maybe that's wrong. I don't know. Hang on, I'm thinking. I mean, Sorry. The way to define the subset of the real line, like, we could say it is the set of points that don't map to minus P or something like that, right? Um, but 
to write it down more explicitly, we'd want to have, we'd want to find some real number that maps to PV the exponential. We know such a thing exists because exponential it's maps are course subjective. I'm trying to find a proof that it's surjective, and mm -hmm. I'm not finding it. Ooh. Um, right. Maybe that's our first call. Yeah. Uh, yeah, Thomas has pointed out something good, which is that when we want to do something like the constructing the trivialization, it would be easier if we did it with uh, refine with the structure notation instead of with this like inductive type constructor. Mm. Uh, passing the functor, we want the exponential map from R to the circle to be subjective. I'm just trying to find a proof of that. Um, it definitely has been done. Aha! There is also a complex.arg. Ooh, okay. So we could define, uh, and in fact, we probably should define the pre image in terms of complex.arg. Uh, yeah. Right? Yeah. Okay, so let's... let's um... This this exponential map is is literally e to the ix, uh, not like e to the two pi uh -huh. x or something. Okay. So. And also we 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 wanted to find this before the refine, not after, because we want it to be available in all of the goals. Okay. Ah, uh, right. After that, we would be in goal one there. Uh, so let's say, pre p of type r is. Oh, sorry, you're, you're saying fix a certain point. In the, sorry, I misunderstood. Well, we have this point P, right, that we started with? Yes. And this is the... We uh, do want to look at the argument of that so that we can write down explicitly what is the what is the preimage in R of our set U, right? Yes, you're right. I was wrong. Uh, past this functor, it's not hard to show it's subjective. It's just that we shouldn't show it's subjective. It's already been proven in MathWeb. And it definitely has. I, I just didn't want to have to reprove it on the spot. Okay. Okay. And so now we have this this point in R, which is a which is a preimage of P. And so now we can write down explicitly what the preimage of U should be. Yes. Yeah. This is a subset of R defined by. How do I do set builder notation? Uh. So, literally, do a set like word write set brackets and then write things in them. The thing that is annoying is that you can't write like, you can't write a function on the left-hand side. You have to be like, there exists a thing in the condition, right? Right, right, okay. The, the middle is always x with type r, right? Okay. Gotcha. The left row. x with type r and then vertical bar? Yep. Okay. If, you do a, if you do a slash slash instead of a vertical bar, you get the subtype instead of the subset. Mm, okay. Okay, so we've got x with type r. Such that exists k in z uh, such that is it a comma? I uh, uh, such that x equals c is not a set; it's a type. So you want to do x k with type z? Ah, uh, yeah. Thanks. K with type z. X equals pre p plus two times pi, not that one, times k. Oh, I, sorry, I'm wrong. You're uh, right. Exists k and And z. then we want to take the... Oh, sorry, it should be... Uh, hmm? I don't, this is, this is the pre-image of, this is the whole pre-image of the point p. I want the whole pre-image of the set u. Uh, so yeah, I really so want. Oh yeah, okay. Um, plus. No, I mean literally define it like that and then take a comp. Uh, but this is wrong. This is the preimage of the point. Because P. then you can use facts like the, preimages. We want the preimage of the of the antipode of P. So I want. Oh, I see what you're saying. Sorry, I misunderstood the the complaint. My bad. Uh, well, I would say just change the definition of pre-p. Like maybe call it t-naught or something. Sure. And have it be the argument of minus p. Okay. And then pre-u, and then we do 
uh, what was this comp? I forgot the Apple is what I would write. I don't know what the minimum thing to do is. It might just be backslash C. That didn't seem to work. What if I? So backslash comp will work. Okay. But you need to do a space after. Is the is I think what you were missing. Oh, I see. Backslash. It won't fire until you try and do a space. Huh. That's oh, yeah, weird. That worked. Oh no, there we go. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Computer just slow. Uh, okay. And remember, you want you changed pre p to t naught because it's not the preimage of p. Yes. Thanks. T naught. All right, we're going. We're going. Nice. All right, we've got our preimage of u, and so now. And at some point, we might want to prove pre u is a union of open integrals. Yeah. We certainly will. That will be pretty easy, I think. Yeah. We might even want to write it explicitly as a union over k and z of stuff. And That's then... what I was thinking in the first the first time, but I, I wasn't sure how you felt. So to write a union, it, you actually use soup. I use soup? Oh. Like literally the word soup? Yeah, sorry, backslash soup. Ah, uh, backslash soup. I see. And that'll give you... You might be able to do big cup, but I'm not sure. And I think it's a capital S to get big, big soup. Big soup. I see. Yeah. So Does union. This, and this really works as the set theoretic union. Yeah. Okay. And I'm going to. Uh, uh, yeah. And then you, you can do an indexed union. So you could do parenthesis K with type Z. Uh, and then we're going to do this. Um, for an open interval, the notation is... Oh, Thomas says that to use union notation, you need you can do open locale, open locale big underscore operators. Thomas, I thought the soup notation was just there. I don't think you need to open the locale for it. Let, let's just wait for the computer to catch up before we do anything. Okay. Let's see what it says. Um, but yeah, then to do a, an open interval, it's set.ioo. So there's, there's several kinds of interval, right? There's like open, closed, yeah. on each endpoint, infinite. IOO is, is open on both ends. Yeah, so set dot i, i for interval, and then two letters in the set, o, c, little i, define an interval. Mm. Does that make sense? Yeah. OK, so set dot i, o, o is the one we want here, and then you provide it the two endpoints. OK. And oh, uh, sorry, you also want the co a comma after the the index, like uh, after the K with type Z. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And it's so a now, capital I in set that I O. Oh, thanks. Okay, capital I interval open open. All right. And so now, what is the interval that I want? I want to go from uh, uh, t naught minus pi to t naught plus pi. Oh no, I want the complement of that. I want to not include t naught. So I want to go from t naught to t naught plus two pi. Yes, t naught plus two pi k. Yeah, right. Sorry. T naught plus two pi k. T naught plus two pi k. Yeah, yeah. You okay. see what I mean? Yeah, I do. Ah, Thomas is saying there is a specific union notation that I was not aware of. I just always use soup. Because so far, I think I've only had to use it for like modules. Mm. Um, set dot big union. Looks like it is defined. So you, you can also do a uh, backslash like big cup or something. <laughs> that dot union is defined to be equal to the super one. Uh, it might be backslash capital U union. Oh. oh it, it's also not going to fire if you don't write the backslash. So you have to do a space and you have to write the backslash I and you can't reuse it. do the thing. Yeah. It might do it. It's I can't been, tell if that's your been, computer. Yeah, it's my computer. It's been very slow <laughs> about trying to actually do the replacement. But I have, I can just type a, uh, no, maybe I can't. That's not as much fun. Backslash union. Yes. There we go. OK. Did the thing. OK. And this once again, this is definitionally equal to what we had before with the suit. Cool. So uh, remember, 
it's typically, typically in a functional programming language, you don't use parentheses oh, and yeah. like pairs class function arguments. We got two right. arguments here. Exactly. Um, yeah. Yeah, I was just going math and for a sec. No worries, I, I do it too. And I understand, or um, what was, what was I gonna say? It does not matter whether you do two pi k plus one or two pi k plus two pi. Right, at, at like the very like, least, if not, we ever needed to unify those two things, we have simp. Uh, they're not definitely equal, but they are equal, and that should be good enough for any applications we have. Cool. Um, so this is the pretty much view. We're going to use that to define the local trivialization. OK. Now we wait for a bit. OK. Uh, there, so people asked me to meet them in a seminar at 3 PM, which is an hour and 10 minutes from now. Okay. So I think in maybe 40 minutes, I will head out. Sounds good. If we never comes back. Yes. Yes. Oh, it's thinking. I think, oh no, we got there. Okay, cool. The orange bar has left the, the thing. All right. Complex is us. unknown. <laughs> Uh, Why? Why? Where does where does arg live? Where does arg live? Analysis dot special underscore functions dot complex dot arg. Great. And we might actually want to do import analysis dot special functions dot complex dot circle. Import. I will. On the bright side, uh, this makes our next map redundant, or our next import redundant. Okay. I actually no no sorry you don't need to do dot log it's dot uh, dot circle complex dot circle. Uh, dot circle and that'll import arg and then as well. we no longer need the second import because it's it's already imported by the the thing. Okay. Also, I kind of love the like I O I I C O I whatever whatever I I kind of love that notation. It's like a fun solution to. Uh, how math efficient write intervals? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That is that was pleasant. And uh, as you can see with the the circle thing, or sorry, not with the circle, with the union, you can define a lot of really powerful notation in Lean. Mm -hmm. So like you could locally define some notation for open half closed intervals and everything, and you'd, you'd want to make sure that you've like undefined the notation for pairs probably mm -hmm. but yeah, yeah lots of math that is written with like extensive use of notation i didn't use it in my project because i'm just not comfortable with it but it's pretty cool that is very cool I oh and then it's probably like, that it doesn't like pi it doesn't like the simple pi. Re real dot pi <laughs> oh real dot pi or we could as i was saying define some notation we could yeah. say abbreviation uh oh sorry it's real dot pi ah makes sense don't, don't do anything before the import. Okay. Okay. Now we have to wait again. Yeah. Uh, Sarah, I have no idea. I assume so. It lets you do very complicated things with the parser, but I don't know. Something like this? Yeah, I think that should work. Okay. Let's see. Stuff. Oh. Ah, oh, geez. Should be a colon equals. Oh, probably, yeah. The syntax highlighting looks better now, at least. Let's see. Yo! Hey! We can write down pi! We need a non computable. That's fine. Oh, wait, it's mad at us because she needs to declare the abbreviation as non computable. Okay, that's silly. It's literally an abbreviation. <laughs> Whatever. You can you can put like non computable theory at the top of the file and then it will never ask you to do that again. And I don't know why I don't do that because I don't actually care, but I don't know. I always mark it explicitly. This is fine. Uh, okay. Great, this looks good. We actually have things. Okay. Yeah, so now we wanted to find the local homeomorphism. So uh, let's, yeah, pull out some, some square brackets. Yeah. There's some curly brackets, whatever. Yep. 
And Thomas was suggesting that we... So do you know what uh, the difference between a structure and an inductive type is in Lean? No. So a structure... You said you had some experience with functional programming, right? Yeah, yeah. So I, I know, I don't know. I can write basic Haskell stuff. I know what an inductive. Okay. Is. So have you seen, have you seen records in Haskell? Yeah, yeah. A structure is a record. Cool. And you write them with very similar notation. It's like curly braces, field mm. colon equals field value. Gotcha. Does that make sense? Yeah. Okay. And also structures can sort of inherit other structures. So. If you look at the definition of local homeomorph in the documentation, uh -huh. it is this structure that has one, two, three, four, five fields. One of those fields is another structure called local equiv. Uh, yes. And so what I would suggest we do is we do refine and then write out the structure of those, th this nested structure, right? Okay. So we're going to refine, and then I'm going to refine with some curly braces. Yep. Uh, and I'm so, going to have some some names for stuff yeah okay i'm just gonna copy and paste these names i guess yeah and the first one at least instead of using an underscore we're gonna put another structure yeah okay and th this will be am i using just an equals or a colon equals colon equals colon equals okay another structure uh, well, let me let me just make it as holes for yeah, now. Sure. Yeah, I, I guess there's no reason that we need to lay it out here. One, two, three, instead four, of, five. Um, One, two, three, four, five. Is this yeah. is this validish syntax? Not really, because okay, you need the names. I need the names. I see. It'd be cool if it could fill in the names for me. Oh, you shouldn't need nested structures and structure notation. Thomas says that. I was not aware of that. Uh, so I guess if you just write it all the names of this and then all the right, the names of the local equiv structures, that should be fine. Oh, cool. So I'll, I'll explain that in a second. Just finish writing this out. So what, what Thomas is saying is that instead of writing out a two local equiv argument, mm -hmm. we can actually write out all of the fields of the local equivalents in the same structure. Gotcha. So let me pull up that documentation. And this is kind of nice because we can write down some things like the source, the target, etc. cetera. Mm -hmm. Okay, I'm pulling Although I'm not totally clear which direction everything's going in. So I don't know if we want to do that. We'll see. Slowly pulling up the definition of local equivalences. This is why I, I use leaves of clock. It is really nice. Like, I understand why people don't like the logical bits. Like, they want to do constructive math, sure. But lead is just a nicer programming language, in in my opinion. I've done a little bit of cock, and it is horrific. Sorry, Sarah. Oh, you were talking about just the proof net shit. Oh, okay. Whatever. I don't care. Okay. I'll stop being a, a hater. a lot of structure in local equiv. A lot of fields. Is there... It, there's no way... It for, is a lot of structure. No way for the lean plugin in VS Code to just, like, fill this shit in for me. I don't know. Someone should write a plugin for that. Maybe oh, that can be your next project. That would be convenient. All right. Um, yeah, so now let's shit out all of the two local equiv structure fields. All right. Too fun. In fun. Maybe I should do it like this. Okay. In fun. I. Of the source and the target, one of them is going to be um, pre-u, and the other one is going to be um, A u times set.univ. Yeah. But we'll, we'll get to that when we get to that, when we see what their correct types are. Yeah. I need holes. Source. So many holes. Target. Ah, 
map source, map target, left inv, right inv. Okay. Map source. Nope, not, not app source. Map source. Oh, I'll explain what the primes are for. It's kind of confusing. Basically, if you look at the definition, uh, maybe I'm not going to explain it. Okay. The primes are so that we can restate something a lemma called map source, which has a nicer type. When you define something inside of a structure, you can't sort of use the field of the structure. That's not exactly right. Structure fields have weird types, and it's nice to have an external lemma that states the same thing, but with a nicer type. That is what I'm trying to say. OK, OK. It's not relevant at the moment. Source two. Uh, you you I, called I, the second. I, yeah. This should be inv. Thanks. So you have all this data, all of this, lots and lots of data. Sure do. So let's try filling in source with the set pre u. OK. This hole here for source was yeah. supposed to have what type? How do I find out? I'm not uh, sure. So that's what I'm guessing for you. It should be the third. It should be the third goal. Ah, right? Uh, right. That makes sense. So if I look here at my goals, goal one, two, three, I'm trying to get set R. Better. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Let's use pre -U. Let's find out. Okay. And then the target. Well, let's look at the type again. Once this is. Yeah. Okay. Well, hang on. Let's look at the type. So that should now be our third goal. One, two, three. It should have a subset of circle cross Z. So that'll be U cross Z that mm -hmm. we want. Can I just write that? Here's as... the thing. You can, but you're going to get an issue. So let's see what the issue is before I correct it. Yeah. So the f here's the thing. The cross is the product of types, not a product of sets, right? Uh, yeah. And okay. additionally, Z itself is not a set. It's a type. Hmm. To get the universal set of a type, you do set.univ, U-N-I-V. Does that make sense? OK, so I'm going to do, can I can I just do it to the whole product? Will that no, work? so what I'm saying is you want to replace the z with set.univ. Ah, OK. Does that make sense? I think so. So now I've. And it, it, doesn't, it doesn't take the argument z. It's implicit. Oh, oh, oh. interesting. So now it'll try to figure out Here, it has to be Z. Here's the other issue. Cross is the product of types and not sets. Yes. So what it's doing is it's coercing both U and set.univ to types and then taking the product. That is lame. Can I do set. Dot? It is lame. It's, it's very cringe. Uh, no, what you do is you do an upper S. So backslash caret S. Uh, I think it's, it's a lowercase S. Oh, okay. And you put uh, that after the... I see. That's like the set version of product. Exactly. Cool. Cool. If I were so to if like I replace set.univ with a Z now, would it coerce the Z to set somehow? Mm, you should try it, but I, I am almost certain no. OK. Let me try it real quick. Yeah, no. It, yeah. it can't coerce Bummer. type to set. If you think about it, you might see why that coercion can't exist. Because you're trying to coerce a type to a set of that type. So it's like a dependent coercion. Mm -hmm. And that, that just sort of is not a good notion. Gotcha. OK. Um, so what's our map from the circle, from R to the circle times Z? Uh, OK. So from R to the circle, from, wait, from R to the circle times Z? Oh, yeah, yeah. that's kind of weird, isn't uh, it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. OK. As our first call is too fun. So now, here's the thing. We want this to have the correct type and to be we want this to be the correct function and to be continuous and everything once restricted to the appropriate sets. Yeah. So it, it doesn't need to be a continuous function. And it can't be, right? right? There's no continuous function that maps to different integers. Well, we can map to the circle cross Z, but but not in the way we want. Yeah. Yeah, sorry, it would land in one in one sheet, is my mm -hmm. point. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Right. So we need to define this function in some really nasty way. Um, well, wise kind of thing. Kind of. It's not that nasty. You just take the floor, right? Uh, 
Right, you're identifying what interval do you need to land in, right? Oh, I see. Yeah. So the, the first component yeah, of the product good, okay. is easy. The first component of the product is easy to write down, yeah? Right, so this guy I'm going to write as a lambda. Uh-huh. You don't need to, but I personally prefer to put lambdas in parentheses when I'm in a refine like this. It just looks weird to me to have, like, commas that mean something different semantic semantically. Sure, okay. Uh, lambda t comma. All right, now I need to produce a point in circle cross z. And so I'm going to do that as a pair. Mm -hmm. And the first point is going to be the image under exp whatever. Yep. Map circle t. And then the second point we need to be careful with the pies um, is. Try actually just putting an underscore there. Oh, okay. Yeah, now we have a goal. I just want to point out that that works. Mm. Within the context where there's an extra T, it works. Right. The, okay. Our first goal is now Z. That's all. You, you, can, you can return to doing the thing you were doing. All right. So our goal, our goal is now to produce an integer. And I want this to be uh, the, the floor of 2 pi T, I guess. Not exactly. Say T lies in the interval T naught plus 2 times pi times k to t naught plus two times pi times k plus two times pi. Oh yeah. How do you? Yeah. Yeah. How do you extract? I need to do. I need to do my uh, t minus t naught divide by two pi. Take the floor. Exactly. That's it. And it should be real dot floor. Yeah. T minus t naught divide by two times pi lowercase pi and. Uh, Make sure that probably the infix operator has right. lower precedence. Okay. That's, that's the correct thing. I'm just trying to find out what it looks like there's a there's a type class called floor ring. Oh. <laughs> Which means cool. you can't just write floor. You can just write floor because floor is a thing defined on in all instances of floor ring. Great. Love love. There's a lot a of good, stuff like that. Love me a good floor ring. Uh but looks it does... like we have not Imported that yet? That's strange. Floor floor ring dot floor. There we go. Floor ring dot floor. Mm. Obviously. Cool. <laughs> All right. So silly. What were we doing here? <laughs> so we've defined one component of the function. It's discontinuous, but it will be continuous on pre u. Yes. That's the plan. How about the inverse function? Okay. So this inverse function, well, I got to let it think. What type hmm? does that need to have? We need to go from circle cross C to R. So I, I'd suggest not uh, doing like induction or whatever. Just take a pair and access the fields by first and second. Uh, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That makes sense. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take a lambda. Uh, pair. We do already have a P that's very important in scope. Oh, yes. Right? P is the base point. Good call. Um, so you can just call it pair. Sure. Uh, is it is it pair dot one or is it pair dot FST? Both work. Okay, cool. Pair, pair dot one is more general. Uh, you can access the members of any structure by offset. Right, okay, that makes sense. So I take in my pair, I have a point in uh, circle cross Z. I'm going to do complex arg, and uh, then I'm also going to do um, uh, plus 2 pi times the, the second. Okay, so I'm going complex arg pair dot. Confused about something for a sec. Uh, okay, we'll see what happens, but I, I think this might be off. Hmm. Yeah, we might, be, we might be a little off. The... First off, it, it doesn't mention the point t naught. Which should be a red flag. Mm, yeah. True. Maybe. Maybe it, maybe it isn't. Maybe this is fine. Actually, I, I think it is fine. Just... This, this, well, no, hold on. Yeah, I, I believe you. This is this is the one that's... This function forward makes us go... Arg, arg, jumps. arg of... 
Wait, isn't there going to be like some weird discontinuity of Arg? Like Arg in is the middle of of, in the middle of our thing, yeah, probably. But but not at not at the right offset. Like yeah, yeah. There's something weird here. There's something weird. The discontinuity of ARG should happen at minus pi, right? Right. Presumably that's where not. they put it. Wait, it does no, not. No, I mean, sorry, minus p. Not at minus pi, at minus p. Right, right. But Well, well, that's where we want it to happen, but it's going to actually happen at minus pi, and so that's a bummer for us. That's what I, that's what I was trying to say. Thank yeah, you. yeah. Uh, yeah. Right, so we do need so... to fix this somehow. Uh, so we want... What we could do is translate things so that zero is minus P. So we could take pair one and divide by minus P, right? Yeah, yeah. Pair one, divide by negative P, not like is that. that. Right? That's not... Hang on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. One, one is where the discontinuity happens. I'm trying to keep this in mind. Maybe that'll work. Um, pair one, divide by minus P. Wait, minus pi to pi... Minus pi to pi means this kind of happens at minus one, right? It's minus one, so divide by p. Yes, not minus p. Divide by p. Because because we want minus p to go to the point where the discontinuity occurs. In... Does that make sense? I think so. Hold on. Yeah. I. Uh, when I divide by p, then minus p will go to minus one. That'll be where the discontinuity occurs, and then. Uh. Yeah, you're right. You're right. Okay. Good. I think we add T naught. Yeah, that's or right. Or something. We need to add, add T naught, or maybe subtract T naught. Yeah, but yeah. we'll see it when we try and prove their inverses. Okay. So so let's just check what would happen if we plugged in the point minus p on the zeroth copy of the circle. Then we would get. So I agree. Our... We should. I agree. We should check that. But why don't? Why won't we check it in the theorem prover? Right? That's right, one of our right. samples. Fair enough. Okay. So now we have more goals. Oh, geez. Uh, first one, let's not worry about it. I think it's the third one that's going to be interesting. So swap three. All right. Uh, this, is, oh, yeah. this is still after the refine. Inside, Sorry. Yeah. Inside here. Swap three. Oh, boy. Is that right? That... Oh, geez. Yeah, yeah, that's right. That's right. <laughs> let's 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 put out some curly braces. <laughs> so, what the hell does this say? So, if we have a real number x and x lies in one of those things, so let's let's do intros like x hx, right? Okay. And, and the reason I'm not worried about like sanity checking our definition before doing this is because we can always just go back and edit it. Yeah, right? that's true. And it will propagate. And now, it. here's my suggestion. Do synth pre u at hx. Or maybe that's not. Maybe you can just obtain. No, I take that back. I'm sorry. I was being silly. A union is defined as an existential, right? Right. So if you do cases hx, it's going to turn into like a witness and a proof. That makes sense. Does that make sense? Yeah. It sure does. Uh, some a tactic that I find slightly nicer is wait, what? It's a set such that it's in the range. Okay, well that's pretty fucked up. Uh, I like the obtain tactic. So obtain is like our cases, or, or sorry, obtain is like our intro, but for cases. Mm. So if you do obtain and then you know s h s or something equals hx like this and uh you want to use the colon equals and you want to put um the l angle r angle around them mm. the same as if you were like matching up here does that make sense i see yep yeah and it's gonna look pretty fucked up and the reason it's fucked up is because the indexed union is defined as like the image of a function yeah. from z to the sets does that does that make sense what yep. it's saying yep but this is fine, because HS, we can recursively match on that, yep. right? So we can say, like, HS1, HS2. Yep. And HS1 is... Well, uh, let's just do it, right? In, okay. in the obtain, change to an HS1, comma, HS2. Okay. Oh, 
Okay. All right. So we have a hypothesis NHS. that oh, sorry. S is in the range of this function. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and then the second yep. thing is that X is an S. Yeah. Okay. The range of a function is also it's defined as an existential. So we can so we can further match on HS1. Yeah. But we're gonna need a nested curly braces here. They're not I, curly braces, sorry. I could do oh. I could do this kind of thing too, right? Yeah, you could also do it on the new line. HS1. If you don't want to gulf your code. <laughs> And then it's going to be like K, H, K, right? Sure, yeah. That sounds good. All right, let's see what that looks like. So this is pretty reasonable. We can even do subst H, K, S, U, B, S, T. This is basically like if you have like a non-recursive equality with some variable in your local context like S, just forget that S ever existed. Mm. Just replace it with the left-hand side of the equality. Cool. Cool. And now HS1 looks kind of funky because it's this function application thing, but it's pretty clear what it means. Or HS2, sorry. HS2, yeah, right. X is in this thing applied to K. Is there, yeah, I mean, it's clear what it means. Is there a way to get Lean to simplify that 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 thing down to apply the lambda expression to the K? So at HS2. Sorry, say again. DSIMP, the same DSIMP tactic mm -hmm. from before, at, at HS2. HS2. Thanks. No worries. I'm here to help. And there we go. Ooh, beautiful. That is much nicer. And even decent uh, set.ioi or whatever. Cool. All right. So we have something kind of reasonable now. We have a context that makes sense. And we want to prove that. So we want to prove if k is strictly between the t naught plus some stuff and t naught plus some other stuff, then. Da, 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 da. Uh, oh, if you X. take x, if you take x x, and you take the first, so try doing decent. Just do decent on the goal. This is going to reduce itself. This is going to look nicer. Oh yeah, that is nicer. Much nicer, and it just all it did was simplify some stuff. Okay, so when I do exp of i x and i divide by p and then i take the argument and then i add t naught and then i add two times pi times the floor of x minus t naught divided by two pi and then i should get x awful hey. that's true you don't think it's true well it's plausible i, I mean i believe that it's not true i have no goddamn clue uh so we can simplify some stuff but this, yeah, this does not look true to me. So the two pies are going to cancel, right? Uh, the two pies are going to cancel, yeah. How do we do that? And try, tr well, we'll get to that in a second. Try simp and see if simp can cancel it for us. Dsimp can't do algebra. So, right. Sorry, I mean replace the dsimp with just simp. That makes sense. The simp will do the dsimp plus other algebra stuff. Yeah. Okay. And hopefully it'll, it'll do some nice stuff. Otherwise, I'm going to have to think pretty hard. To, to do some basic algebra. Okay. Now we wait. Hey, nope. Nope. Okay. Uh, can you hover over the the like arrow thing? Because I'm not sure why it's coercing. Why it's coercing. What it's coercing. Hover over the division sign. It'll tell you what the inside term is. I think it might. Why is it? What what is going on with coercing it to an integer? What? Oh, that's the floor. Oh, that's not the absolute value. It's the floor. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. We and we that's that's what we needed, right? That's the that's the function we had. Yeah, yeah. So we should be able to prove that floor term is k. That's yeah. That is the goal, right? Um, but that's, so let's assume we can do that, right? Yeah, x minus this... t naught divide by two pi. That will be easy to prove has floor k. Yes. Yeah. Um. So say we can do that. What is this actually saying? We get that the argument of the exponential divided of this stuff divided by p. 
Uh, wait, what was P? P was a point in the circle. So you take the exponential and then you divide by P and then you take the argument. So there should be something that's like arg div. Complex. I'm checking the math of do docs. Complex arg div coa angle. What does that mean? Ugh. Yeah. The problem with so arg div confusing. is that it doesn't just subtract because the output of arg is weird, right? Yeah, I think it, I think you're right. That'd be a really annoying um, thing to try to write down. It is going to be annoying. Well, is it going to be annoying? Hang on. So what we expect it to be is that it's going to be like p minus t naught or p plus t naught. Oh, this is so messy. So we know we know that last thing is going to be k. We're going to have yes. we're going to have t naught plus k, and we need this to equal x in the end. So that guy better be x minus t naught minus k. t naught minus two minus two pi k. Uh, yeah, thanks. X minus two, not minus two pi K. Um, yeah. That's weird. That doesn't seem right. It doesn't seem right because X minus two, not minus two pi K is definitely positive by assumption. And this argument may not be positive. I think what we have is that the, one of the issues we have among many is that the argument is defined by splitting up the real line into subsets from minus pi to pi. Mm -hmm. And we're trying to go from zero to two pi. Yeah. yeah, and then shifting everything over by by this. So, how do you actually fix that? I'm gonna. I guess. To, let's try to write down exactly what this was. Um, I will. I will share my iPad to the. Yeah, I think we're gonna need to change the definition of free u to be like t naught plus two pi k minus but pi times two k minus one to pi times two k plus one. That's the correct way to say it. Does that make sense? Pi times 2k minus 1 to, to pi 2K times plus one. 2k plus 1. So we're increasing by 2 each time, and it's disjoint. It's going to fill everything out. And when k equals 0, this is minus, one to pi, minus pi to pi. OK. Pi to 2k plus. Yeah, I see. I see. I. Uh, yep. Yep. 2k minus 1 Okay. Conceptually this feels better to me. We're still probably wrong. But like maybe wrong in different ways. Let's see. Let's, oh, also uh, change then change we gotta the do, yeah. D simp because right, D simp is run. not going to take as long to run. Yeah, we, we do want the the D simp at H K though. So D simp at V dash at H K V dash. How about that? Does that make sense? D simp. So on on the previous line, just add V dash to the app. So the map we had uh, in one direction, I think it'll be easier for me to write this down in, in real life. We have a map from, from R to S1 cross Z. And that was, we take this, we take this T and it goes oh, to- I'm hearing you in real time on Discord, but I'm seeing the notepad with stream delay. Uh, yeah, that is unfortunate. Sorry, let me... Okay. If, can if you could that. pull up the thing on Discord, that would be yeah. a lot easier to follow. Absolutely. Let's try that. <laughs> and so the S1 component needs to be E to the IT. That's fixed. Yeah, yeah, of course. I'm gonna I'm gonna write down the actual thing we did we did do, which is here. Oh so true. T minus T naught over two pi. So that's what we have written down right now. And then in the other mm -hmm. direction we have a map 
S1 cross Z to R, which we wrote down as, um, let me say, Z comma K maps to, we did arg of Z divided by P. Um, what arg, arg is uh, up top, like the, the, the branch cut or whatever. Uh, wait, sorry, say again. We should write down the branch cut of arg so that we keep in mind. Uh, so yeah, arg yeah. is a function into uh, negative pi half open to pi closed. This. Okay. Um, Z over P plus T naught plus two pi K. All right. That was our. These were our functions, and then we can backslash think about... C. <laughs> yeah, I did write that in real life. <laughs> uh, we're talking about the branch cut of arg. The brains are getting. Someone was asking. Yeah, yeah definitely. Uh, I'm glad that I'm leaving in eight minutes. You should also probably take a break. But I feel like this is a good first stream. I would like to continue doing it in the future. Yeah, yeah. This would be this would be great to keep working on. Um, uh, yeah, pessimist functor. The the place we're at here is we're trying to show we're still trying to show that R covers S one, and to get there we had to define the the local trivialization. So around each point, we're trying to we're trying to cover um, for each point P in the circle. We're taking the whole complement of minus p to be the set on which we're trivializing, and then we need these inverse functions back and forth from this like this pre-image of this complement of p needs to be homeomorphic to um, to that complement cross c. Um, and the way this happens in lean is that we actually have to build maps back and forth from the entire real line to S1 cross Z and S1 cross Z to the real line such that the restriction of this guy and the restriction of this guy to these appropriate subsets are actually inverses. Um, I say you, it, it is actually nicer to work with these functions of the entire thing. If you tried, like you could do this all with functions on the subsets, but it's nicer to have the condition that the subsets like, like when you're doing some math, you define some functions and then you prove they're, they, that they're well defined, right? Like you prove that they have the right domain and codomain. Mm. It's the same idea here. You just write down the functions. You don't worry about subtypes and stuff, and then you prove that they are actually mapping to the right places. Mm -hmm. And it's not actually like harder because you could always just define the function by saying like, if it's in the subset, do this. Otherwise, Otherwise return an arbitrary random thing. thing. Yeah. Yeah, fair enough. So, like, I, I think it is it is the right design design decision to have it defined on the entire thing. And th you see this a lot, like division or inverse in a field in Lean is defined on the entire thing. It just returns zero, otherwise. Yeah. And then this isn't going to cause problems because all of your theorem statements have to actually be true, right? Hmm. So you always have to yes. actually handle the correct. The theorem like, statements you know, have to actually be true, but it could have the weird consequence that you end up proving a theorem that seems wrong in normal math, but happens to be true, because like when the yes. things are... There, yeah. There's a fun theorem with convex sets that I was working with recently that's like, the, the documentation comment is like, in math, this requires zero and S, but in lead, it doesn't. <laughs> All right, I'm going to head off, but this is a lot of fun. We should do this another time. All right. Bye, yeah, everyone. Thanks, thanks so for coming. Thanks so much for teaching me. I, this was no super, super helpful. I had a lot of fun. Again. Yes. Bye, everyone. See ya. Cool. We've we've hit our sub goal of, of zero new subs. So confetti. All right. I really I still actually have no clue how to tell how many people are watching right now. It could be zero. Oh, I can see. Whoa, there's a lot of people. Maybe? I still don't know what I'm doing. I'm very new to Twitch. But thanks so much for coming. If you if people are here, this was really fun. We'll do it again. Um, I'll post this VOD, I think, 
I think this was recorded by Twitch. Again, I don't really know what I'm doing, but assuming that worked, I'll post it on YouTube. It'll be on Twitch, so you can watch it in the future if for some insane reason you would like to do that. Um, and if I ever actually finish this proof, then I'll stick it on GitHub and you can check out the actual code. Hopefully it'll be a little nicer than it looks right now. Anyway, thanks for sticking around. Um, hashtag subscribe, like, share. See ya.